All right, so we just finished breakfast and getting ready and all that fun stuff. So we're gonna head out. It's, I don't know, I can't see the time now. It's probably getting close to 7.30. We were hoping we were getting moving by seven, but it is what it is. We've got supposedly about 11 hours of daylight. So we're gonna try and make it to the next camp spot before dark. Um, my watch is ready to go. So I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, so we've been going a little bit, it's wet. I decided to finally take the freedom step because I already had a wet foot, so I'm just gonna plow through. Jason's still in the game, trying to trying to keep the feet dry. So, yeah, no, it is what it is. Apparently I made the right choice to get my feet wet because no matter what in this section, you're gonna get your feet wet. Yeah. So, and oh well, way no way to get around it. Jason tried to go through the field and then realized he was captured by a giant <laughs> pond in the field. So, it is what it is. Jason's chasing the wild, vicious armadillo <laughs> of doom. He came charging at us to give us leprosy. Yeah. And then ran into the boardwalk. It's almost like we're on the Florida Trail. I'm just walking through water all the time. I mean, only difference probably is this water is actually cold and the Florida Trail water is probably all soggy and nasty. So that's what we've been walking on now. Just kind of wide, smooth, pine duff. Um, I'll spin you around here. So back here, you can see nice little, they had some boardwalks over some wet areas, which has been nice, but you know, when you're already wet, still it's better than being in slick mud. So, you know, I not, definitely appreciate them. Glad that the, the people that come out and actually maintain this area of trail seem to do a pretty good job. I know some of this is, they had seven inches of rain five days ago or something. So. Some of this is just inevitable unless you made a boardwalk to traverse the entirety of a bunch of this section. Probably there's not any way that you're going to stay out of getting wet unless it's been dry for a little while. So and all this drains down into Lake Marion. So, you know. All right. Well, I'm going to put you up and I'm waiting for Jason to finish some morning business and we'll keep moving. I'll keep you guys up to date. Wild boar. They got hit on the road. Oh, he's ate man. up with flies. Oh, yeah, he's got heads cut off. Full of maggots. Yep. I bet he has a boar. Somebody cut his head off. That's a big And then he split open probably yeah. from all the Ugh. nast. Mmm. I won't zoom in. I figure you probably don't really want to see all that. All right. All right. The next destination where we think we're going to get some cold something and sit maybe for a few minutes. We were at Pax Landing. Um, just had a train come by us on the track, so that was pretty cool. But now we're gonna step in here, maybe grab a couple things to eat and drink quick, and then we're gonna hop back on the trail and keep going. We have gone 10.3 by my watch, probably 10.5 by Jason's, but he started his before my and start till we actually walked out of camp. So he's got a little extra from walking around camp and such, but that's okay. Doesn't matter, we gotta get where we're going to, regardless of what watch miles say. So, all right, I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, so we just got done at PAX, got a cold drink and some cold candy bar. See some cypress knees down here. Crazy. All right, we're in 3.5 miles of Sparkleberry. We can walk the dock here and then cut off looks over here to the right, I guess. Or maybe go up these stairs over here. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we go up the stairs. So, have to jump over the fisherman. Keep you guys up to date. Oh. Well, we found some bench magic, so you know what that means. Gotta sit on it. All right, so we're wandering through the woods on our way to Sparkleberry. It was not as dry as we were told necessarily, but it's been a good amount of uh, 
boardwalks over the nastier stuff so so far we've managed to stay dry so keep you guys up to date so i was just thinking about something it's kind of crazy it's february mid-february and there's already buds on the trees here and on the boardwalk and crazy 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 granted again it's supposed to be high 70s today so uh, i know back at home they're supposed to be getting uh, severe winds probably potentially tornadoes so oh crazy at take note palmetto trail gave us a switchback to go up 25 feet okay just saying something to think about switchbacks maybe you've heard of them Right. Thought I heard something rattling. It's interesting. Huh. All right, well, we're almost to Sparkleberry. I had to make Jason get in front because I'm walking too fast. And that's naughty, so. Um, I don't know what that place is. That's interesting. But, like I said, we're heading to Sparkleberry. Gonna get some water and a couple things. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cold soak my lunch up and slam that down and then I'm ready to rock out of here. Keep you guys up to date. I think these are cypress trees out here. They got like a blue hue. Miles? Yeah, somewhere around here. Swamp, 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 brother. All right, as you can see, we're off the dirt road, off the pavement, which was very short-lived, which was nice. And we're back on this nice, wide forest road here. Um, we are a couple miles shy of the end of the passage. Then we'll move on to High Hills of Santee. The only drawback to that that we're aware of is, from what I saw a couple days ago, the first three to four miles of that passage are deep sand. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we get there. Hopefully maybe the recent rain will have packed the sand down and it won't be like walking on the beach. But we'll see when we get there. Keep you guys up to date. All right. So we just came around the corner into this. A lot of new pine growth, a little forest road. Should be nice. As you can see, it's pretty overcast looking, so curious to see what happens with the weather. I have not been able to get enough service. I can get text, but that's it. I can't um, pull, pull weather or anything. So, you know, it's one of those times when I'm sitting there, was the tarp the right choice? Because if it gets crazy and whatever, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna have to deal with it because that's the choice I made. But, you know, it's one of those things you live and learn. So keep you guys up to date. Well, we found the rumor was true. Deep, shifty sand. So we're trudging through here. I'm trying to make three miles an hour for the rest of the day. That'll get us just shy of Poinsett State Park. And hopefully it's to water. And hopefully it'll be six o'clock. So right before the sunset. And that's the plan, so actually feeling sore in some places I've never been sore before. So I don't know if it's just the lack of elevation. I don't know, it's weird. But my like, some of my inner thighs are just really, really taking a beating today. So, huh, something new. Again, never underestimate a trail you've never been on. Usually proves you painfully wrong when you do, so. I'm gonna keep slugging away at this thing. Um, I'll keep you guys up to date. Well, we are feeling the heat today. We are both getting kind of zapped on performance and we've only gone 24 and a half miles. I don't think I've ever felt like this on a trip, but it's also not usually 77 degrees in February. So I think I have different expectations when I'm out and it's hot than this so 
I don't know, it's weird, but definitely something to take note of. Um, we're still pushing, we're gonna see what happens. We may, we may try to get to the park if we get there, because we may have to because of water, we haven't seen any. Um, then we're gonna, I think what we'll do is if we can fly a straight shot to the campground, we may take advantage of that and get showers and stuff just to kind of have that mental boost. And then we'll come back in the morning, hike back out the way we came in and do the three and a half miles in the park that we need to do rather than trying to get them done tonight. So that would cut us down from 11 and a half or almost 12 miles total from the last trailhead to about eight-ish. So see what happens, but it's, you know, it's pretty. It's definitely been clear cut through here, but it still has a unique beauty. So I'll keep you guys up to date. Prescribed burn here looks like. This might be more than a prescribed burn. This could have been a forest fire. Yeah, I, think I don't these know. These are pretty scorched. Yeah. Going? No, we definitely won't be camping in here. No. So we definitely got to keep pushing. We were, we're going to stop. Really try. We were thinking about stopping sometime here soon, but we're I really think we're kind of getting to the point where we're going to have to go to the campground. So. <laughs> All right, we're currently off the trail. We are taking a one mile um, road walk to the campground. So we're gonna get off for the night there and camp because we need water and all that good stuff. So that's the plan. And then we're gonna walk back up the mile in the morning and jump right back on where we just got off. So make up those miles that we're skipping tonight in the morning. And we may squeak it in right before it gets dark, so. Keep you guys up to date. I told I told Jason we're gonna sleep right here in this shelter. And there's water right below us, so he didn't agree. <laughs> well, bad news, the campground wasn't as close as we thought. So we started walking down there and realized we had a mile or a mile and a half to go. And then after do that in the morning, we ended up just deciding to turn back around. We got water down here in the park at the creek and we're walking back up to where we came off trail and we're gonna camp right there. That way we don't have to do anything over in the morning. I mean, it's literally a mile and a half, two miles to where the camp sites are and we don't have cash. So, you know, it just started seeming like more and more of potentially a fiasco. So we kind of wish we had thought about when we came down from the cabins but that wasn't actually a good spot, spot to get water. Um, so we found a low spot over here where we could actually get to some decent water without getting too bushwhacky or wet. So that's the plan. Um, about to turn 30 miles for the day. So Man, feeling it today. Hopefully I'll sleep well and I'll be ready to go in the morning keep you guys up to date all right i know you can't see it great but this is my first attempt with a tarp i used my tripod actually to set it up staked it down tight at the bottom i'm just leaving up top here i'm just gonna let it flap i think i was gonna try and tie it out but um i don't want to cut the line at the moment because i've only got 15 feet of line until i get my resupply and then i've got 50 or 60 feet of bear cord that I'm never going to use. Uh, I've got to, I'm going to try and hold on to this, depending since there's potential for rain tomorrow night towards the early morning. I want to make sure that I've got some options. If I need to just run a straight ridge line between trees or whatever, but I'm definitely going to have to stay, you know, get it strapped down tomorrow. So I didn't like, so I didn't want to cut anything or mess with anything until I knew what I was doing tomorrow for the weather. Cause not supposed to be any tonight, but I figured I got a little bit of condensation on me in the, or not condensation, but dew on me yes, this morning. So I decided I'd just pitch it and see what happens. So, all right, I'm going to eat and then I'm going to lay down. I've got to get off my feet. So I'll talk to you guys in the morning.